Shalom to the elect. <clears throat> Let's begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kadash, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kohala Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kadash. Let's give double honors to our head apostles, our leaders today from the great millstone that taught us this truth. Salutation, peace to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and in truth. And to the listeners, the Negroes, so-called Negroes, Latinos, African-Americans, Native Americans, Hispanics, you know, speckled birds spread among these nations. Because Israel is going to come looking like these nations also. Like the Lord scattered us among all of them. So yes, at the end of it all, you know, the angels are the ones that's going to do the, all the gathering. You see, the ones that are going to be exempt are the ones that have received the mark. The mark of exemption mentioned in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4. You see, and we put, we, we say we are the hopeful elect. We say that in sincerity and in, in humility, you see. But the Lord always tells us to put on as the elect and do the things that the elect are going to be doing in these last days, meaning you repenting less, okay, seeking the Lord and living in the spirit, not uh, fulfilling your loss, okay, not fulfilling the loss because we know that the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We are at the end of uh, Esau's kingdom, self-proclaimed, white man this is the end of his kingdom everything is falling apart right in front of our eyes and like the bible says i'm gonna go there quickly um let's see that's the spirit man it just happened that i had it out that's why i said the bible says second ezra chapter 9 verse 1 he says he answered me then and said measure thou the time diligently in itself the time that we are living in how are you measuring the time you go back to what? The prophecies. Everything that our forefathers, eh? from Daniel all the way down to Ezra, okay? All the things, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, all the things that they've told us to be watching out for, leading to the second coming of our king, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. This is how you measure the time. These things are coming to pass. So when these things started to come, that's when you know, okay, we are at the end. This is what the Lord says is going to happen. And it's happening right now. So I better prepare myself. He says, I better prepare myself. That's how you measure the time diligently. By looking at the news, following the news, what is actually happening. Don't watch mainstream media. Don't get distracted with social media. Because they're just going to continue to feed you with folly. You see, watch the videos. What are the men of the Lord saying? What is happening? That's how you're going to get. That's right. We cover everything through the spirit and power of our king, the redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai. This is the post, the sole purpose. That's why he brought us back here to do this work. This is it. He brought us here to do this work. That's it. That's what we were put here to do. You see? And that time has come. So this is it. We're never going to be putting lessons together again in the kingdom. No. This is it. This is leading to the second coming of our King, our Redeemer. And that's how you measure the time. It's a measure down the time diligently. And it says, when thou seest part of the signs pass, which is what? The tokens, the earthquakes, the uproars of the people, the fact that Esau, Edom, everybody is calling him on his lies. Putin's relief, uh, what? Uh, Putin bringing out all these images of the Israelites. Telling the world that the so-called, uh, what is it called, sweet baby Jesus, eh? we know that his name is not Jesus. When the Lord was on scene, the letter J wasn't even in existence. We know that his name is Yahweh Shai. That's why the Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, African American. That's right. They were dark complexion, right? You see, they were not pale skin, blue eyes, blonde hair. Today, they're going to be looking like those nations. But original, that's right, we're going back. Back, back, way back. Yes, they have the image. They know who we are. And these are the things that are happening right in front of your eyes. The Lord says at the end, knowledge shall, shall increase. Eh? It says here, diligent, it says, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee, eh? 
It says, then shalt thou understand. Eh? That is the very same time where in the highest, the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai will begin to visit the world which he made. That's right. That's how the Lord visited the world. He's causing confusion among this nation. He's asking, he's telling Esau to go all out. Esau is just indiscriminately killing, destroying, bombing embassies. That's right. Because why? He has to show his true colors. He has to fulfill the book. The Lord says he gave him the sword to take peace from the earth, the self-proclaimed white man. This is the end of his kingdom. You see, this is the end of this is his kingdom. So you've seen everything the Lord says is going to be happening before he sent our king, the redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son. So everything is happening. That's how you measure the, thou the time diligently in itself. Eh? It says, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, you're going to see it. We have a video from RT and we're going to allow, uh, what is it called, our, our, our friend here, Nathan from the Canadian Prepper, to update us on what is happening, okay? It says, when de therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then, it says what? Then shall thou well understand that the Most High spoke of those things from the days that were before thee. That's right. Some of the things that we are living through today, family, it was spoken of, talking about 3,000, 4,000 uh, years ago. What uh, I can remember what year Daniel was on the scene. Daniel prophesied about what? All the kingdom that the Lord was set up. The dream that the Lord gave him in Daniel 2 and 7. We're talking about centuries ago. Thousands of years ago. You see? And now what? It's coming to pass. That's the time now. It said, then shall thou well understand that the most high, our power, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh is his name, his only begotten son, our king. The Redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai, eh, spoke of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So family, let's allow Nate to speak for a bit and then we're going to take it from there. All right. This is just going to update us. And then I have a video also from RT, a news update. And we have a few precepts and hopefully it's not too long. And at the end of it, all, I hope you are edified. Okay. This is, why, this is why we do this lesson. Know the time that we are living in. This is leading. This is the... He saw the Lord set a bound for him. Job 14, 5. He cannot pass it. They can't. The Lord is going to, it's not going to give them extra three years. No. This here, especially this last uh, bombing of uh, the Iranian embassy in Syria. Oh yeah, family. It's going to escalate because we know that in the Middle East, so-called Middle East, that's where the biggest, that's where Armageddon is going to take place. The Third World War. In the midst of that Third World War, that's when Yahweh Shai, our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, is going to show up along with the angel. And you see, but we know that the microchip is also on its way. A lot of things are happening. And family, we thank the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, for giving us the eyes off to see this. And for bringing us here, for first and foremost, bringing us our teachers, our elders, to lead us into this uh, amazing, amazing path that we are on right now. We pray that we will endure to the end. You see, we pray that we endure to the end. And this is for the elect. Only the elect are going to take heed to this message. And let's go. Three. So, it appears as though one of the largest cities in Ukraine is being liquidated of its human resources as we speak. A mass exodus from the city is underway. Now, this is based on the limited amount of information that we have coming out of Ukraine because it's very tightly controlled, as all democracies are nowadays. Of course, it's illegal to upload video, but the one video that I've caught wind of that appears to be legit that is circulating around right now is showing jam-packed, ass-to-ass, gridlock corridors outside the city people trying to get the hell out of dodge while well, they still can it's so bad in fact that you have people driving on the wrong side of the road in the inbound to the city traffic lanes trying to get out right now people are not succumbing to the normalcy bias that's seen a lot of people trapped at the beginning of this war because they listened to the ukrainian government who said don't worry there's not a war coming this of course because they didn't want to impede military maneuverability and logistics routes and of course they needed to trap manpower there to throw 
as cannon fodder into the front lines. And that's just a hard reality that everybody is coming to terms now. It's now well within the Overton window to say that out loud. Now, as we speak, since Russia unofficially declared a war by first referring it to, to it as a war, Dmitry Peskov, the press secretary for Vladimir Putin, on the same day of the Crocus terrorist attacks in Moscow, for the first time framed this as a war. And since that time, Russia has been heavily targeting Ukraine's critical infrastructure, in particular their power grids and their telecommunications networks. Now most of Ukraine is dependent on Starlink for internet, and a lot of the country is blacked out, including Kharkov. Now it appears as though what the Russians are trying to do is shape a situation where they can encircle Kharkov, possibly do a full-scale invasion, but that's going to be big because, of course, this city when in its peacetime uh, population is around 1.2 million people, I believe. Very big city, 15 to 20 times bigger in population than was the city of Bakhmut. I'm not sure how dug in it is. I don't know how many Cold War era bunkers, how many Azovstal type steel plants and tunnel networks there is to hide under there, but that could be one hell of a protracted, bloody battle if it actually takes place. I'm sure that the Russians are going to try to take it through some other means so they don't have to go block by block because if they do, that is going to be a nasty one. Now, the Ukrainian government, unfortunately, has a vested interest in keeping as many people there as possible. I don't know if this was a government decree evacuation order. Again, uh, information is limited. I'm guessing people are leaving the city of their own volition. They don't want to succumb to that normalcy bias that had them trapped there in Kiev where, you know, everybody who wasn't a militant, had a gun put in their hand so that they could be the poster child of a Time magazine article uh, to win international sympathy and you know how the whole thing went. Unless Ukraine at this point in time gets some windfall of financial support from the West, then it's over. And I think this guy right here, Zelensky, knows that. And when I say it's over, all I mean is that they're going to hand the keys to NATO. Okay, so that doesn't mean the war is over. In fact, that means the war is just getting started. What you're seeing right now, very covertly, is Zelensky is turning over his entire cabinet. Every single day, I read about another five to ten people that he is relieving of their positions and putting new people in the government. Almost as if to give them, like, paid extended vacations, sabbaticals, uh, other jobs in diplomatic positions around the world or in adjacent countries, almost as if they're starting to build a government in exile. They're getting ready to hand NATO the keys. Maybe they think in their mind that this new skeleton crew that they're throwing in there is going to have better bargaining potential and that they're going to be able to hoodwink the Russians with Minsk 3.0 or, or whatever it is they cook up next. Uh, but it starts to look like this could be what's happening. They're going to hand NATO the keys because right when the F-16s enter the battle zone, and it's going to be American pilots, I'm going to talk about this in a moment. I talked about it the other day and <laughs> I waited 48 hours and it was confirmed. Anyways, once those enter the fray, the NATO and Ukrainian military will be virtually indistinguishable at that point. And, of course, this means that NATO is effectively at war with Russia directly. And what we once knew as the Ukrainian government will just dissolve and merge to be this transmutated version of NATO, Ukraine, Ukraine-NATO, Ukraine-NATO, maybe that's what they'll call it. I don't know what they're going to call it, but it's going to be this new entity that emerges where it's kind of governed loosely from abroad, maybe somewhat on the front line from a distance, because of course these guys who've been in there capitalizing on all the pain and suffering of the Ukrainian people for so long are going to jump ship as soon as, as well, not as soon, but you know they're going to try to ride it out to the bitter end. But Zelensky wants to give everybody a running head start, and then he of course is going to take that business trip at the very last minute and likely not return. Now that is not even the biggest story of the day. The biggest story of the day is Israel effectively declaring war on Iran. 
Today, Israel took out three brigadier generals of the IRGC on Iranian soil inside Syria. Okay, so we're talking about the Iranian embassy, the consulate next to it, which was hit, completely destroyed, right between the Canadian embassy and the Iranian embassy. In fact, three high-ranking brigadier generals were assassinated, as well as, I think, four or five more higher officials. And this, of course, was a full-blown declaration of war. Israel is getting ready for war. Just 24 hours prior to this attack, gold was on a bull run. Gold has been on a tear, touching almost $2,300. Completely insane, day after day. In the week prior to what we're seeing now, Gold went up nearly like, what is it, like 100 bucks, 150 bucks. This is unprecedented in the history of gold. A move like that, you see that in Bitcoin. You don't see that in gold. Why? Because gold is like 15 times a bigger market. For those types of numbers to move, when the US dollar hasn't moved, and I know I was one of the people who coined the term that, you know, gold, the price of gold doesn't change, the US dollar it measured in does, but not in this case, okay? This is different. So this means that something else is happening, which means that it's trying to tell us something. Gold and oil are the barometer for shit hits the fan, and they're both slowly creeping upwards. Here's what's going on in Israel right now. Israel is currently amassing emergency supply of fuel, food, medical gear to prep for war versus Hezbollah, over $500 million, half a b -b 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 billion invested in boosting stockpiles of these basic provisions. Now that's just boosting stockpiles, okay? That's not their actual wartime strategic stockpile. That's boosting stockpiles. We've been talking about these exercises they've been running, the evacuation orders issued in the north. We've been talking about the parking lots that are being loaded up, getting prepared for war. It's about to go down. The people in Israel are beating on Benjamin Netanyahu's doorstep day after day. The protests get more violent and bigger. So if he doesn't start this war soon, he's on his way out. And I don't know if he's going to get out unscathed if he does get out of office. So long as he can retain power, then he might have some sort of immunity. But uh, as soon as they get rid of him, then his days are probably numbered. And he knows that, which is why they're going to try to bring the United States into this conflict. That's exactly what's going to happen right around the time that that American humanitarian vessel... And oh, he said it. They're going to draw America into the conflict. That takes us to what? Let me bring it out. Because it's all... Because before it happens, eh? The Lord tells you of it. We're going to quickly jump to Jeremiah 25, eh? No, 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 no. I think Jeremiah 49, 20. Let's go to Jeremiah. No, where is that? Jeremiah 49, 20. Please bear with me. What am I doing here? Jeremiah 49. Mm. We brought this out, family. I know you've heard it many, many times. But listen, man. Let's say we repeating. Every, that's how the prophets of old. Jeremiah repeated the same thing. Isaiah, you know that the Lord put the same word in their mouth. So they continue to bring it out. Eh? They were speaking the same thing. And it says here, therefore hear the counsel, straight to the point. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord Yahweh that he have taken against Edom. Today they call themselves white. They call themselves Caucasian. They call themselves European. They call themselves British. They call themselves Canadian, American. That's why right. this is their biblical name. This is the one the Lord is coming to visit. These are the nation that the Lord is going to show no mercy. Obadiah 1.18. Okay, let's continue. It says, and his purpose that he have purpose against the inhabitants of Timon, your modern day Germans. Eh? Surely the least of the flock, eh? meaning what? The insignificant, which are what? The small hearts. That's right. It says what? Shall what? They say, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. You heard him? Eh? I'm probably going to rewind it. It says here, the least of them shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. That's why. Right. Let's go back here. Let me see if I can. Uh, no. Let's pick it up from uh, around here. 
Let's go the day the protests get more violent and bigger. So if he doesn't start this war soon, he's on his way out. And I don't know if he's going to get out unscathed if he does get out of office. So long as he can retain power, then he might have some sort of immunity. But uh, as soon as they get rid of him, then his days are probably numbered. And he knows that, which is why they're going to try to bring the United States into this conflict. Oh. That's exactly what's going to happen. Right around the time that that American humanitarian vessel enters the conflict zone, which is going to be in and of itself a tripwire so that you're putting American troops in, uh, in the pathway of the conflict and possibly they are going to suffer casualties and that of course will be justification for America entering the war directly of course they don't have to say anything but they've been on the ground the whole time helping the israelis they're very indistinguishable i mean you know in a lot of cases you're speaking the same language uh the demographic of the people in uniform are, are very similar so it's very difficult to tell right so anyways in parallel electricity grid fortified to minimize rocket damage daily blackouts are expected when the war with hezbollah begins Israel is going to be halting gas rig operations. They're going to be switching to alternative sources of energy during the war. So they, they got this penciled in. This is all planned. Hezbollah is expected to fire up to 5,000 missiles and rockets daily. Now, of course, these are going to be far more powerful, far more accurate rockets that can defeat the already diminished Iron Dome system of the Israelis. So the Israelis are in for a fight. Now, what I worry is that someone in Hezbollah, because they have the capacity to do this, anyone in the IRGC, Yemen, Iran, they could target the Israeli Demona nuclear facility. And if they do that, we've seen how disproportionately the Israelis overreact to anything, right? So what's likely going to happen is that that Samson option, I think the nuclear threshold, I mean, this is a people who had something called the Hannibal Doctrine. Okay, let's just think about that for a sec. The Hannibal Doctrine goes basically like this. Uh, if you're in a war zone and there's friendlies and you're trying to kill the bad guys, and if the Hannibal Doctrine is enacted at that time, you just blast everybody. Okay, it uh, reminds me of a scene in Braveheart where the king, uh, you know, the <clears throat> basically commissions the guy to... Uh, tell the archers to fire and he says Saya, won't they fire on our guys too and he's like yeah but they'll hit they'll hit the other guy too so just do it right so they don't care about friendly fire at that point in time the Hannibal doctrine I do believe that with a threshold so low that the risk of utilizing the Samson option in this scenario is very high especially if there's any sign that Hezbollah is getting the upper hand. And once you use, you use nuclear weapons against a unarmed nuclear superpower, does that then give license to Russia to use nuclear weapons in the war against Ukraine? Does the use of nuclear weapons in one theater increase the likelihood of nuclear weapons in another? Now, of course, the UN is gonna be triggered and nothing's going to happen, as it typically does. The UN has proven to be completely and utterly. Behold, says the power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun. Eh? That's the East family. From the south, from the east and Lebanon to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. You go back and you read the book of, let me see if I can get it quickly. You go here to Jeremiah, I think it's Revelation, Revelation 16, is it 16, 12? I think it's Revelation 16, 12. It says here, And the sixth angel, eh, poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. That's in the Middle East. That's right, they call it the Middle East, Levant. That's West Asia. And the water thereof was dried up. 
that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. We just read it. What did he say? He says here, Behold, says the power, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Lebanon, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. To who? The Israelites. All the captivities. And especially this last one, this last Roman captivity was harsh. Yes. The Lord is now, it's about to pour it upon them. Eh? Since they mentioned the book of uh, here, we read this here, eh? to prepare the way what? for the kings of the east. For what? The war of what? I'm getting but Let's look up the status. He says, the Lord says what? The river will dry up, right? Euphrates River. Let's look at status. No, no, no. Uh, status of Euphrates. Euphrates River today. Let's look at some images here. You see, this is the river. Now, you see the status of Euphrates River. Fam, over the years, this is what is happening to it. Because this is prophecy. Eh? This is prophecy. If you look closely, you know, you can see that what? The, from here, it says to what? You go here, that's the alpha is what? The first letter of the, what? the Greek alphabet, right? Alpha, and then you come here, omega is the end. That's the river right now. This whole region used to be covered in what? Water. Eh? Before and after. Family, it is getting worse and worse. But this is why it is drying up. Because what? Third World War is at the door. We have the sure word of prophecy. But these nations, they are talking about people buying gold and buying diamonds and buying silver and buying all this stuff here. None of that is going to deliver you. None of that is going to what? Deliver you. Because, you see... Once the Lord, if you are fortunate enough, if, if you are fortunate for the Lord, to, if the Lord showed you mercy to actually see what is happening right now, man, you have won the lottery. You are highly favored. That's right. If you can see what is happening through the spirit and power of our King, our Redeemer, our child, oh, you have won. And that we see it. But here, let's bring out this news article. Eh? And then now uh, we have a few precepts. Let's allow this gentleman to, to speak, just to see the temperature in the Middle East right now. Eh? It is boiling over, especially this recent attack. Let's go. Let's take a look at the escalation in the Middle East. Iran's mission to the United Nations has accused Israel of conducting a terrorist attack. Iran says an Israeli airstrike killed several high-ranking officers at its consulate in Syria. Tehran's envoy to Damascus vowed retaliation. The Islamic Republic of Iran has never left a crime of the Zionist regime without a response. Certainly the Zionist regime and its allies know that they should wait for Iran's proportional response to this villainy, which is based on Iran's wisdom and will be conducted at the proper time and proper location. We have never witnessed this type of crime committed. There are international laws and they have kept the boundaries, even though many of our diplomatic boundaries were broken and some of our diplomats were martyred. In my opinion, the Israeli regime is at a dead end and is compensating for its failures in confronting the resistance front, especially the failures it suffered in Gaza. Tensions are once again on the rise between Iran and Israel after a period of uh, relative calm. Iranian media sources have now reported that uh, Israeli missile strikes have targeted and uh, completed entirely uh, destroyed the five-story building of Iran's consulate in Damascus. The strikes also hit uh, the ambassador's residence, but the ambassador um, and his family were reportedly not present during the attack and uh, are now safe. According According to Syria's official uh, news agency, Sana'a, the strikes were carried out by what they refer to as uh, the Israeli enemy and targeted uh, the Meza neighborhood in Damascus. The strikes um, caused significant damage to uh, the buildings around the Iranian embassy as well. The Syrian foreign minister immediately condemned the assault. Our people are accustomed to responding to such cowardly aggression and will demonstrate 
to all of humanity that such aggression should be met with even greater resilience and stronger support for the Palestinian people and resistances, whether in Iraq, southern Lebanon, or anywhere else. We expressed condolences for the victims and our sorrow over such attacks carried out without any justification against diplomatic institutions. We emphasized the need to continue Syrian-Iranian relations as they are built on morals and values, unlike Western countries that heartlessly support Israel in committing such crimes. Iran's foreign minister also said that uh, the attack on the Iranian consulate building in Damascus is a, a violation of all international obligations and conventions, adding that this will not uh, deter Iran from supporting the Palestinians. The uh, back and forth exchanges between Iran and uh, Israel had subsided following the Gaza conflict. For now, we hear comments from the Iranian uh, officials, especially from uh, Nasser Kanani, the Iranian spokesperson for the Iranian uh, foreign ministry who has warned of serious repercussions. He has said that uh, Israel would be liable and responsible for any more escalation, wider escalation on a regional scale because uh, Israel has uh, assaulted the Iranian consulate and that is based on the Iranian foreign ministry. That is a clear violation of all international laws and conventions. Among those killed was a senior commander in the elite Quds force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Mohammed Reza Zahedi had served in the military for 44 years. He took part in the Iran-Iraq war and later became the head of the Quds force in Syria and Lebanon. Russia has called for a UN Security Council meeting on the attack which is due to take place on Tuesday. Now, meanwhile, other countries in the region have strongly condemned the strike. Pakistan has called it a major escalation, while Saudi Arabia said that targeting diplomatic facilities is a violation of international laws. Investigative journalist Vanessa Bili, who lives in the Syrian capital, told us she heard the explosions from the deadly strike. Strike came in at about five o'clock. Um, it was a massive strike because I'm in uh, the western suburbs of Damascus and it sounded literally next door. Um, so the first three strikes were extremely loud. Um, we could then hear the air defense uh, engaging. Um, the entire building, which is the Iranian consulate, which I believe was used as a residence by the ambassador, was destroyed. So far, there are uh, six martyrs. Civil defense teams are looking through the rubble, but the entire building is destroyed. So we're pretty sure that everybody inside the building was killed. This is a huge escalation. I mean, we did have another strike, if you remember, in central Damascus in the same area back in January. But even this morning at around 4 or 5 a.m., I could get the time wrong because the attacks are coming in pretty fast at the moment from Israel. Hundreds of protesters gathered outside the former Israeli embassy in Tehran after the, the attack. Demonstrators were seen burning Israeli and American flags. It also showed support for Palestinian people in Gaza. Iranians have demanded retaliation for the strike from the Iranian diplomatic government. Israel has always had a barbaric character, but its action tonight was more than that. Its action questioned diplomacy itself. It was aggression on Iranian territory. The building next to the embassy was part of the embassy. It was an inhuman and barbaric action. Since Israel has directly attacked this time, in other words, it has declared war. Our response should be public and clear. This must be reviewed with strategic forbearance. If Israel finds the courage to attack Iran directly, it must be destroyed. Meanwhile, the Iranian foreign ministry has summoned a Swiss embassy official who represents Washington. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 10. Let favor be shown to the wicked. Who's the wicked, you ask? Esau, he himself proclaim white man. That's right. Yes, sir. Malachi 1.4 tells you. It says the earth. Malachi 1.4 tells you are they at the border of wickedness. Job 9.24 reminds us that what, this particular planet, this particular earth that we are living, this rulership was given into the hand of what? The wicked. That's right. Job 9.24. And the wicked are in rulership. 
And the Lord told us that he gave him the, the great sword to take peace from the earth. And you go back to Genesis, whose blessing was the sword? He said, by the sword thou shalt live. You see, he's speaking about a nation of people. The common denominator, the person that has taken peace from the earth is no other than what? Esau Edom. Today, they call themselves white. They call themselves Caucasian. They call themselves British, American, Canadian. That's right. They are the same people. Their biblical name is Esau. Esau's name was changed to Edom. That's right. Hmm? It says here, let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly. You are living in the land of Israel, the holy land. And family, it's not enough for them. They took in over the land They've since what, 1948. That's right. That's when they went there. They said they are the people of the book. But guess what? The whole world is going to see it. That no, no, no. You are not the people of the book. No, no, you are not. Because you go back and read the book of Isaiah chapter 2. I recommend everybody to read it. It tells you when the children of Israel return to that land, this nation to learn war no more. So why is still there? Why is still war still going on in the land? Somebody need to answer those questions. You see, but guess what? The Lord is family. Everything that the Lord said is going to happen is happening right in front of our eyes. That's right. You can hide from prophecy. You can take this platform down. You can burn all the Bible all over the world. That is not going to stop prophecy. You see, this is the Lord's movie. Hey? He says here, he says, In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly. LGBTQ, Tel Aviv, they have the biggest uh, uh, G-A-Y parade in the land. And you are in the land of uprightness. He said, let favor be shown to the wicked. They can, they can, they can never do right. That goes to show you that what? The Lord doesn't lie. He says, can what? Uh, it just popped in my head, but let me finish this. He says, let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, will he deal unjustly? And will not behold the majesty of the Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Let's go quickly to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 13, eh? 13, verse uh, 23, I believe. Let's go there quickly. It says here, you ask the question. So if the Lord makes somebody wicked, if the Lord planted an orange seed, eh? and then he goes down there, he goes, I mean he returns later on, and then he sees apple. And coming off, no, it will never happen. The Lord plant an orange seed. Guess what? Eventually, that tree is going to bring fruit of orange. It will never bring apple. Eh? So here it says, can the Ethiopian change his skin? No, Ethiopian can change your skin. You can change the skin because what? That is the skin the Lord bless you with. You can change your skin unless eh, you are some of these women from the west coast of Africa and all over the world bleaching their skin. Eh? He says here, or leopard his spot. A leopard can change his spot. He said, then may he also do good that are accustomed to do evil. No. If you are accustomed to do evil, that's what the Lord has put in your DNA, your seed. That's what you're going to be doing. So Esau is doing everything that he's supposed to do. That's why he went and destroyed what? The Iranian, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, consulate in Syria. That's why he's destroying everything. The Lord is allowing him to. And the man, the son of perdition is being revealed right in front of your eyes. And that's how blessed we are to have this truth. Esau, self-proclaimed white man, is doing everything the Lord asked him to do. That's why he is the undisputed heavyweight champion of wickedness. You cannot, you cannot come against him. And let's go to the book of uh, Jeremiah. Did I bring it out already? Uh, I wanted to do Jeremiah 51, I think 25. Did I bring it up? I don't think I did it. Oh, right here. Jeremiah 51, 25. I said, behold, I am against thee, O oh, destroying mountain. He destroyed everything. The Lord allows him to. Eh? The Lord put that seed, that spirit in him. And the Lord is coming to judge him too. That's right. Oh, don't get it twisted. Family, that... The land, the, their plan is to what? To destroy Gaza, take over Gaza, and put put in a uh, like a, a, a waterfront uh, building. You know what I mean? Resort. No, family. 
after Gaza is destroyed, this is it. It's all leading to Third World War. This year, this is it. We're not going to die on this end and then come back and, and preach this word again. Come back in reincarnation. No, family, we believe this is the generation. I speak as a man. But my spirit tells me that this is it. This is it. We're not going to die on this end and then come back and do all this over again. No, this is it. This is the last judgment. This is it. This is leading into the our kingdom. Esau's kingdom is coming to an end. It said, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, says the Lord Yahweh, which destroy all the earth. You hear that? Who destroy all the earth? It's no other person but Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed white man. He's the one destroying everything. Eh? He says, And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a bent mountain. Eh? A bent mountain. Let's, let me get this quickly. And family, I think we're going to wrap it up. Let's go here. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Is it Ezekiel 30? Uh, I think it's Ezekiel 35, 6. It says what? Since they, they, I think something about they hated. No, let me. I think it's Ezekiel 35, verse 6. Is this 6 of? Let me see here. Ah, that's it. The water, how about Shemi? I was right. You see, these people here, family, it doesn't matter. Blood is nothing in their sight. Oh yeah, blood is nothing to the, in their sight. We experience it. We experience it in the love, in every different captivity. Okay? Family here on the plantation, what did they do? Family, they worked their Sunday best to watch us, to, to watch us being hanged. Eh? We brought this out on our last uh, speaking, day, uh, our last uh, on the highway, byway. We're, to we're talking about what? The strange fruit. Uh, I think Billy, is it Billy Holiday? That sang that song. That's right. You see, they will come out and watch us being hanged. It was an event. It's a big event. You know, cut, cut the man's junk off, put it, that's why I put it in a jar and send it to each other. That's what they've done. Blood is nothing in their sight. But guess what? Since they love blood, guess what? Yahweh Shai. He already said they're not going to meet him as a man. He's coming with his angelic. Actually, you know what? Let me read this and then we're going to get another precept. It just popped in my spirit. It says, Ezekiel 35 verse 6. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord, Yahweh power, I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee. Sith, sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Are you listening to this? Blood indeed is going to pursue you. And that's why Yahweh Shai is bringing. Yahweh Shai is bringing blood. And family, let's end it there. Yahweh Shai is bringing blood because that's the only way. This man here only knows violence. So Yahweh Shai is not going to come. No, it's, it's not going to come and, and bring you peace. No, 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 no. This man here doesn't know negotiation. Doesn't know. All he knows is violence. So Yahweh Shai along with Michael the Archangel are bringing violence. That's what is coming. That's how it's going to meet Esau, Edom. Uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah 66. And then we're going to finish there. Lord willing. Isaiah 66. We're going to pick it up from verse 15. Or maybe we'll go. Let me see. Is it 15 or maybe? Uh, yeah. It says here, Isaiah 60, uh, 66 verse 15. It says, For behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with fire. You hear that? He, he will come with fire. Because if you go back and read the book of Luke 12, 49. Right, he tells you he wished this place is already on fire when he shows up. So, if the king of kings and the only begotten son, his wish is that this place is going to be on fire, you don't think his father is going to grant him that? That's right, it's going to be in the midst of third world war. His father is going to grant him all his pleasure. He's his only begotten son, he is the representation of his father on this planet here. So, guess what? His father is going to spoil him. So his father is going to make sure that this place is indeed is on fire when he sent his only begotten son, our king, the redeemer of Israel, to meet Esau, Edom. Nobody's going to take that sword from him except Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is going to take that sword from him and he's going to meet him with violence. Let's go. It says, for behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariot like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. You see that? If anybody tell you that the day of the Lord is going to be, everybody's going to be holding hands and singing kumbaya and eating candies and ice cream. No, they're sadly mistaken. He said, for by fire and his sword, 
And his sword, his missiles, his brimstone, everything that's going to be shooting out of the lasers, that are going to be shooting out of the, what is it called, the chariot. And he said, that's going to be the Lord's sword. And therefore, by fire and by his sword, would the Lord Yahweh plead eh, with all flesh, punishment. That's right, plead eh, with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord shall be many. And then when you go back and read the book of Jeremiah 25 verse 33, let's finish there. Jeremiah 25, 25 verse 33, we're going to end it there. Eh? Because that's what the slain of the Lord shall be what? Many. Let's find out from here. Jeremiah is saying the same thing. He says here, and the slain of the Lord. On that day, since he saw love violence, dropping bombs on pregnant women, children, and all that, he's coming, he's about to receive the same thing. He says here, and the slain of the Lord Yahweh, Bahashem, shall be at the day from one end of the earth, eh? even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented. Nobody's really going to be out there crying for you. Oh, little Johnny. Oh, so look at, oh, no, nobody's going to be lamenting, family. Eh? Neither gathered nor buried. Nobody's going to be calling what the funeral home. Listen, I have a body on, on a 67 and 23 street. Can you somebody come and pick up my letters, my, my son or my husband or my sister or my husband or my wife? No. Nobody's going to be having time to uh, pick up bodies and go bury them. Because there's going to be bodies everywhere. That's how the Lord is about to introduce himself. Yahweh Shai is about to introduce himself to the world. Huh? It said, day, it says here, let me read that again. And family, we're going to end it. Jeremiah 25, verse 33. Let me take my time and soak it all in. And the slain, the kill, eh? that's right, the body count eh? of the Lord Yahweh shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Eh? They shall not be lamented. Hmm? Neither guarded nor buried. Eh? That's right. They shall be dung upon the ground. They're going to be fertilizer for the, the ground, family. That's what is coming upon this earth. Terror upon terror upon terror. And we pray that the Lord will indeed cut the time short. And we, can, we feel it. Already, already October. I say October. <laughs> already April 2nd. I'm dropping the gun. That's right. April 2nd. Barakata Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Kakudai. So things are about to be escalated to a whole different level. And we say, beware, that's right, the Lord is the one doing it. Oh, yeah, they're going to fight the Third World War. And the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, his name is going to be lifted up high. That's right. The same way after with the deliverance in Egypt, after the destruction, the calamity, that's right, the chaos he brought into uh, he brought on, uh, uh, on Pharaoh. That's right. Esau Edom is the modern day Pharaoh. And the Lord is about to show his power once again. Family, I hope you were edified or praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our heavenly father, and his only begotten son, our king, our redeemer, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.